Perfect. So thank you so much, everyone, to com for coming to this workshop. Um, we're super excited. We have a line of amazing presenters for you. We'll be doing some engagement activities um, as well. So this workshop is titled Foregrounding Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion um, from Dialogue to Action. And so we're going to be doing some activities to help you get educated on what these terms actually mean, why they're important for you as a student advocate on your campus, um, and how you can be a proactive student leader once you, as you're learning what these terms mean. So I want to go ahead and introduce our presenters. Um, to start, my name is Catherine Squire. I'm the Vice President of the Student Senate for California Community Colleges and also a student studying social justice at San Joaquin Delta College. Um, and then Gian, if you'd like to introduce yourself next. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Gian Gaetau. A legislative affairs director for Region 5 and a second year stu history student at Bakersfield College. Hi, I'm, Priya. Um, <laughs> I'm Priya. Um, I'm the Foothill College student trustee as well as a second year sociology student. Awesome. And I just got a message. My mic is going in and out. Is ever anyone else hearing that as well? Do I sound okay? Okay. Maybe it's just my voice getting lower. My apologies. I have a very quiet voice sometimes. <laughs> All right. So these are our presenters. Um, we're super excited to bring this workshop to you. Um, we want to go ahead and go over the goals of this workshop, just so you know a little bit of what is going to be going on today. Um, oh, here you go. So we have some activities for you to learn from each other about the diversity in our system. It's something that we really want to teach you. Um, also, why diversity, equity, and inclusion are so important in cultivating supportive learning environments for all the students in your campus and how you can be a part of that. We also have a section on how to deal with situations that may arise on your campus. So we will be presenting some scenarios. Um, and getting your thoughts on how to resolve those issues. Um, and these are things that may happen on your campus that you may encounter, so super important to be a part of those solutions. Um, there's also a section on creating your own custom action plan for your campus as you actually be cultivating throughout the, um, the period of this workshop. And then at the end of this workshop, Priya is going to be presenting some resources for being an active diversity, equity, and inclusion advocate on your campus. All right, so we're going to start with a little activity um, that's just going to help you embrace your diversity. You know, we've already presented ourselves and we've done some introductions, so we really want you to introduce yourselves to each other um, just to get a sense of the students that are in the room right now. Um, and so this is a, di a diversity wheel. As you can see, there's so many facets to um, diversity in our identities as students, right? Um, there's age, gender, uh, race, ethnicity. You can see all of the different ones here. Um, and so what we really want you to do, um, we're about to provide the template for the action plan we have for you. Um, but we want you to take this diversity wheel into account um, and really build a profile of yourself and your identity from a, a diversity perspective using this wheel. So we want you to consider all of these um, in your profile. And I'll go ahead and put the action template in the chat for everyone to access. Um, and you'll want to just start by filling out the first three prompts under embracing diversity and intersectionality. Um, on the action plan. And so as you're doing that, I'll kind of explain what this activity is going to entail. Um, we're going to actually place everyone in breakout rooms. You're going to um, introduce yourself, yourself to your group through a diversity lens. Um, part of that action plan, we're going to be asking you what struggles and what obstacles you face being on campus as a student. And also, what are two to three resources that helped you on your campus? You know, and these aren't just limited to academics. They can be physical resources, uh, resources that help you physically and mentally, as well as academically. And so we want you to kind of brainstorm that um, and just think about your college journey and coming into community college and what was it like for you? What was your experience like? Um, and so once you go into your breakout rooms, um, you're going to have a chance to introduce yourselves to your peers. Um, and I really want everyone to take this opportunity to 
um, you not, not only share your diversity, but also listen to what your peers are saying um, and take note of any resources that you may not have on your campus that can help you, your students or, your, or student populations that you may not be aware of. I think a lot of the time as student leaders, um, we get into student government and service because we want to help people who are in positions like us. Um, but being part of a student, being a student leader also means advocating for people in positions that are different than ours as well. Um, and so we want to help you really cultivate that, what that means and what um, what kinds of resources you know you may be lacking for other student populations on your campus. Um, and so in your groups, there's going to be groups of about five, um, five students. Um, we'll give you about seven minutes in those breakout rooms. Feel free to incorporate, you know, any of your personal experiences. Um, we really want you to dig deep into everyone's identities. Um, and then at the end, you know, maybe in the last couple minutes, choose one to two group leaders to summarize your conversation. Um, after that, we'll be inviting everyone back um, to, uh, you know, share, share out what, what came up in your conversations and what, um, what those conversations look like. So, uh, Julie, if you can go ahead and set up the breakout rooms. Hopefully everyone has kind of had a chance to think about this. Um, we all put up the visual again. Um, and build that profile of yourself in this time. Okay, so if the breakout rooms are ready, we'll go ahead and launch them. Uh, you should be receiving an invitation to one of those. Uh, so just go ahead and feel free to accept that, that invitation. Alrighty, welcome back everyone. Uh, is my audio still good? Can I just get a thumbs up some more? Awesome. So hopefully your discussions were insightful. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do a share out, but before that, I wanna introduce you some, to some definitions here because they may come up. Um, distinguishing the difference between bias and prejudice. The pr prejudice is a prejudgment or unjustifiable and usually negative attitude about one type of individual or groups toward another group and it is and its mere, it, sorry, and its members. Such negative attitudes are typically based on unsupported generalizations or stereotypes that deny the right of individual members of certain groups to be recognized and treated as individuals with, with individual characteristics. A bias, on the other hand, is a particular tendency, trend, inclination, feeling, or opinion, especially one that is preconceived or unreasoned, um, unreasonably hostile feelings or opinions about a social group. And so very, very similar definitions, but a little bit distinctly different. Um, and so I anticipate these might have come up in your discussions or maybe just as you were thinking through um, the conversations that you were having. So uh, I'm gonna invite those who want to share to go ahead and share out. Um, but you should have picked one or two group leaders to kind of summarize you know, what went on. Um, but I want you to you know, what, share out what did you learn about um, from others' identities in your conversations. Uh, if there, if you identified any of your biases, you know, call, call them out. There's no shame in that. And I really hope student leaders become accustomed to um, calling those out on your campuses as well um, as you're going through your experience of being a student leader there. Um, and then this is more of an insightful question for everyone to just think about, but could you imagine your community college journey without those two to three resources you mentioned were um, you know, su supportive for you? Would the lack of those resources change the position you are in today? Um, and so I'll share, I'll invite everyone to share who would like to share. Um, I don't know who our group leaders are, but if you just raise your hand and I'll go ahead and unmute you. Awesome. So we have Angelica. Hi. Um, so unfortunately, we didn't, we kind of ran out of time at the end. But when we started talking about our different identities, I did start to see, I, I saw some similarities between us. Like some of us were first gen students. Many of us, actually, all of us were of some sort of uh, diverse background. A lot of us had different. Um, 
racial backgrounds and ethnicities that we identified with. Um, there were also a lot of uh, points that we brought up about our, our identity, about being disabled students and students who uh, take, um, not take, but have uh, disabled student resources on our campus. Um, some of the struggles and obstacles we face on our campuses are like the lack of information, um, the societal divide over racial justice that I, I'm gonna uh, piggy, uh, tag team uh, Jen Galinato next because I know she had a little bit more to say on that. But um, some resources that have helped us, one would be our disabled students programs and services. Um, those help kind of um, help bridge the divide for disabled students on our campus. And Jen, I'm a tag you tag team you now. All right, I got you. So before we got called back in, one of the points that was brought up is this divide between students in any aspect of society, especially given with the current events that have transpired over the summer and even going back into spring of the previous semester while going into COVID, there was this divide of students being able to access resources to have classes or even in regards to the conversations about current events that were going on. Unfortunately, with Sac City, we don't have those resources. I can't speak for all of the colleges, but I would hope that there is a resource to where students are able to take classes or someone they can go to to talk to about the instances and things around them day so they can have a better understanding and grapple on what's going on and how to respond or to talk to others about it who might be feeling the same way. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing and getting the conversation started. Um, is there anyone who would like to, to go next? I see Sophia. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, cool. Um, so we did go through and introduce ourselves using the inner and the outer circle. And uh, a struggle that I faced on campus was finding a mentor or um, someone that like a support system. And for me, I found that in the honor system and resources that we don't have on campus um, is an interfaith center where students can freely expe express their um, religious identity in a safe environment. Um, it doesn't have to be just for one um, religion, but an interfaith center. Um, we're working on that. We're in for the new student building that's coming up, but we don't have anything um, to, to have for students in the meantime, because that's coming out, I think, in five years from now. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely something that's important. I think my campus doesn't even have that. And that's something we're working on as well. Um, and then I encourage everyone who's just listening as you're listening to some of these, um, you know, maybe resources um, that students have or don't have, uh, you know, take into account if your campus has them. If they don't, then maybe that's something that you want to note down um, and something you want to advocate for. Oh, and I'll, I'll also like to um acknowledge the privilege I have of being a Latina and also white passing. I understand that that's a privilege because um, the, the PAC community, the BIPOC community carries stories of oppression and different stories that I live every day. Um, but, I, but I do definitely recognize that. Yeah, I relate to you on that one. I'm much the same, the same um, sphere of that, so completely um relate to that <laughs> any um anyone want to continue that conversation or share out um and then maybe you know it doesn't have to be a group leader if you're just someone who wants to share to feel free to can can i add a little bit yeah the, the yeah. as org we wrote resolutions for an interfaith center it's just that we don't know how how to progress after that because they get passed through the board of trustees but then but then what happens how can we hold the board accountable after that 
So just recently, I, I added this, um, as student trustee, I added this to the agenda uh, for Board of Trustees to create dialogue and see what's going on. But I was wondering if other campuses uh, express or have that carry that same issue where they're looking to amplify student voices. Even found in resolutions too. How do, yeah. Yeah, Sophia raises a really good point. Does anyone want to respond? Um, maybe share some best practices of how you've addressed that, if you've encountered that. Or any um, solutions you suggest to Sophia to kind of move that along? Is there anything you'd recommend? Chair, there is a comment from Jen Gallinato in the chat. It says faculty yeah, has done something different. recently, but it is hard to intact because of the environment we are in. Jen, do you want to speak a little bit more on that and just share? I hope you guys can hear me because <laughs> I have the notification going whether it's unmuted or not. But yeah, to speak on that, so Sac City recently in regards of having open discussions about what is going on in the environment we're in. So what we did recently is we signed a joint letter with BSU, at least the chapter we have on campus, to make sure that they have a space. Now, once we did that, the big question that came to mind is how can we make sure that it's not just BSU that has a space where they can talk about these issues, but also for other clubs on campus. As I like to describe it, and I'm sure, I hope there's someone in Sac City also that can speak to this as well, that Sac City has what I like to call a majority minority population of students on the campus. And the big thing that I wanted to address amongst the student campuses. How can we make sure that your voices are being equally heard given the perspective that you've had and with your experiences and how can we integrate that into making sure that we as student leaders accurately represent and fight for your beliefs. So one thing I really am trying to push for in our own student senate is to have a police student relations committee in addition to having, I believe, oh, what was it that our student trustee put out? She made a district-wide Black Lives Matter task force, I believe. I hope I have that right. I'll have to look at it again. But additionally to that, it was encouraged that all these schools individually within the Los Rios district did something as a not I don't know if it's a subcommittee or sub task force, but something similar to implement on their own campuses individually. So another thing that I really am hoping to bring up to our ASO and student body is having an equity and diversity committee. We already have that on campus, but it's only seen through the facility or excuse me, not facility, the faculty point perspective. And there's not so much a student perspective on it. So what I hope will happen is that when we establish it within the student senate, that we'll get more of the student perspective. We additionally even created a position within our own student senate to have the student specialize in that matter of going in above and beyond to actually interact with the students and make sure that whatever needs or issues that are prevalent to them at the time are addressed within the student senate and they're not something that just sit on the back burner and just wait there for someone to take on eventually. It's something that is going to be presented to us at the floor and whether it's something we're going to take action immediately or maybe we to wait a week on to take action. But that's something I hope that will inspire other campuses to do as well. I can't speak for all of them, but that's just at least something that Sac City has done because at the end of the day, the student voice is important. And we hope that every student feels accurately represented through that with our efforts and whatever efforts we're doing now and more that we plan on doing, especially given the time that we're in right now. 
Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And I see Sophia's nodding her head here because I think, you know, we're all kind of um, just impressed by what you're saying and you're completely correct. Um, you know, we need to have those committees that come together. And I think that's a great idea to have, you know, if you're in a, in a district that has multiple colleges, that's a definitely a way to bring your colleges together to kind of address those equity issues, right? Um, so that's, that's a great response. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and then hopefully, Sophia, maybe that, you know, kind of stirs some solutions in your mind too. And for everyone else who may be experiencing issues with not just religion, but also, you know, a ton, tons of other resources that you may be finding yourself needing on your campus. So, um, you know, this activity, I really wanted everyone to learn from each other um, just about, you know, their identities and how that relates to what obstacles everyone has faced because everyone has a unique set of obstacles, right, um, that require different support services, that require different um, people to address, and so that's important. Oh, I see the chat going. <laughs> yeah, feel free to provi provide support to each other in the chat. So the main overarching theme of this um, engagement activity is to realize really that, you know, our community colleges are so diverse, so incredibly diverse. Um, and more than the CSU and UC system, we're one of the diverse, the most diverse systems, um, you know, in, in our nation. And that includes bringing together um, biological, social, cultural categories, including gender, race, class, ethnicity, and social categories. And, you know, really re realizing how they interact. And as student leaders, it's hard, right? Because you have so many different kinds of student populations on your campus and you have to balance the, the interests of all those different student populations. Um, but it's important to recognize that those exist. And that's really the first step um, in, in finding solutions for those different student groups. And so I just, Put in a quote in here but i think this kind of speaks to this uh, this is a co quote by kimberly williams crenshaw that says if we aren't intersectional so some, some of us the most vulnerable are going to fall through the cracks and so i want you to keep this quote in mind you know when you're participating in conversations on your campus you're representing students like yourself but you're also representing students that are completely different from you um, but it's still important to include their perspectives in every single you know activity every single committee meeting that you're involved in um, and just keep that in mind. And so going back to this diversity wheel, wheel you know, in the context of education um, and your personal advocacy on your campus, there's kind of this, um, you should be thinking of this wheel with a third branch because there are all these, you know, different categories, but there's also all these support services that are attached to each category. Um, and so I want you to really look at this holistically and think, okay, what am I missing on my campus? Um, and also think of the student populations that are your campus. And if you don't know what those are, really do your homework and do some research, right? Um, and look at, you know, maybe you have a really large veteran population and they don't have the resources that they need. And you, 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 you want to be the person um, to create those resources for them. Yeah, embracing diversity goes both ways as a student advocate, right? So we're gonna move on to one more kind of engagement activity. Um, you know, everyone here has kind of already gotten the, the gist of equity versus equality and what that means, hopefully. Um, but this, this is just one more activity to kind of engage your perspective. And so uh, we're gonna go back into breakout rooms and kind of discuss what this visual tells you. Um, what's the difference between the three and why is it important to recognize the difference on your campus? And so I really want everyone to think critically about that. Um, and then hopefully we can do the breakout rooms again, um, probably a shorter period of time. I'm going to say no more than five minutes and then we'll come back and have a, uh, a larger group discussion. Um, alrighty, so we'll go ahead and head into our discussion. Um, after this, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Gian for one of our last activities. Um, but does anyone want to start by sharing? And then I think we can maybe just start with the visual, kind of what you saw the difference was. Um, oh, we have one person. Yeah, go ahead and um, unmute yourself. 
Okay. Hi. So in my group, we talked about the different stages. Um, and it's kind of like a process between like, we have equality where like everyone gets the same thing, but then that doesn't sustainably recognize that some people have different needs, um, depending on their individualistic circumstances. And so equity is the way that that's kind of remedied. And so like, um, I think if we go back to like the picture where there's like people looking over the fence and like some are taller than the others, like obviously the tallest person doesn't need, you know, extra leverage to look over the fence. Yeah, like that. But um, like the the two shorter people need more assistance in looking over the fence. And so like when we get to the part that's like justice, that's like the state of um, like equality is reached because we've identified like look all these people like can't see but in order to make everyone see and we can like keep in mind needs from like people that were unable to see over the fence the first time we can just remedy that by making a solution that aids everyone's specific needs so that's kind of how we discussed it yeah, that seems um, really awesome. I didn't even think of it that way, but you brought up, you know, some really excellent points there. Um, does anyone else want to add to that? Did anyone define it differently? <laughs> There's like no, I guess, right or wrong answer here, but um, I'm interested to hear, you know, some other conversations that might have happened. What about someone from the, the second group? Yeah, Angelica. All right, so I guess our, um, the idea of this picture that I have is that we always talk about equity. We want to reach equity. And this may be along the lines of what Brianna may have just said, kind of, but we always talk about reaching equity or equality. But I think in order to have a fully just society, a fully equitable society, a fully equal society, we need to also address all of the um, barriers um, and wrongs that have been committed against different type groups of people, different types of people. And let's just say in this country, for example, to in, in order to reach that level of justice where everyone is able to access resources freely, access resources equally. Um, yeah, that was a ramble. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just I just think like, um what we what we really need to aim for more so is like justice where instead of just equity and kind of upping like giving more resources like this is this is coming off wrong um but i think again we just need to aim for justice which would mean that like let's say the society already is set up in that way where we have equality we have all of these uh good conditions for every single person um, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about the ramble. No, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Would anyone else like to share Just some last thoughts? All right, so to maybe kind of frame our discussion in a different direction, you know, we've kind of identified the difference, right? Justice is really um, you know, all, everyone who spoke kind of hit it on point. It's really the collective responsibility of a free and just society, right? Ensuring everyone has civil and human rights, uh, everyone's civil and human rights are preserved and are protected. Um, and then we kind of, you know, hit the difference between equality and equity. Quality being that everyone is treated the same and then equity being that everyone is given the resource that, resources they need to access the same opportunities. Um, and so hopefully everyone kind of got that from the discussion. Um, but now I really want to move our discussion in, into, you know, why is the recognizing the difference so important on our campuses and so important as student advocates? And so uh, hopefully, you know, more people will be open to sharing. I think this one is, um, you know, there's a, there's a variety of different reasons why it's important. Would anyone that like to share?
No raised hands? Any volunteers? Don't be shy. Uh, Chair, there is a question in the chat yeah, by I Sophia. It says, what's the difference, diversity? Oh, diversity? Um, that's the question mark. I'm not sure if uh, Sophia wants to elaborate more on that. Yeah, do you want to elaborate? I think you should be able to. Oh, I was just uh, wondering, like, point of information, if difference, what, what difference are you uh, asking? Like, are you seeking difference in diversity or? Um, do you mean for the, this question specifically? Yes. Um, you know, why is recognizing the difference between uh, equality, equity, and justice important? Like, in the context of how, you know, you're a student advocate on your campus, like, where does that come into play? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't mind answering. Yeah, I don't have the response. Uh, I think it's important to to find where where our strengths and where our weaknesses are, um, because like in an, in a utilitarian mindset, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Um, and you know, at, on a campus with college students that are uh, going to be the leaders of our future, we strive for no. No winkling. So we would go to target those marginalized communities and provide them the the resources for the ultimate and just outcome for everyone. Thank you. And I see another hand from Roy. Would you like to share? Sure. And I'm kind of along the lines of Sophia there. I, I just think that realizing and knowing uh, what's important on campus or what the differences is. Uh, allows us to focus our, you know, what we can do as a student body government um, on particular things that may need focusing on. So being able to focus in those areas, um, I think just create more equality or more equity that has a more justified system for um, everybody to be able to make you know, the same opportunities. And just, you know, you'll find a lot of hidden opportunities in people who aren't able to provide for themselves sometimes. Um, sometimes they have more of life experiences that we won't have if we didn't go through what they went through. And therefore they may look at something a little differently and you never know, they may be able to excel where we couldn't see what they see. So being able to allow everybody to open up their minds in that manner uh, could really benefit not only the school, but, you know, the student body and eventually alumni and um, things like that. That's it. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that insight. You know, um, I think this goes back to recognizing and embracing everyone's diversity, right? Um, and I think, you know, when it comes to equality and equity, Quality is giving everyone, you know, the same resources, saying here everyone gets the, the same thing. But equity is kind of recognizing that we all have different needs. Um, and that's important in our community college campuses because we serve so many different diverse populations. Um, and so I just want to provide some background for, you know, this question. Um, you, you all, you know, went above and beyond the response, but um, just uh, to provide some, some other responses as well. Um, obviously, it helps us become better advocates for our students um, when we recognize the difference. Um, it helps us bring up new points in the conversations that we're involved with, right? So, you know, when you're in your student government meeting and you're, you're very involved in, um, you know, cultivating campus culture, you want to think about what environment you want to set for everyone um, and making sure that it's an inclusive environment where everyone feels like they belong. Um, and then just some examples, you know, you on your campus, um, presumably you have participatory governance committees in which you're allowed to sit on um, and provide your perspective as a student alongside faculty and admin, uh, who a lot of the times, you know, might not really recognize that equity as much as you, you have the ability to do. Um, so super important in there, of course, in your student government meetings as well. Um, and then both local administrative leaders on your campus um, and statewide leaders all the same. Um, and so hopefully everyone 
from these two activities that we've done now has kind of gained that sense of awareness um, with which you interact with students, faculty, and administration, and that really improves your capacity, right? Uh, developing this mindfulness of, you know, who, who is on your campus. Uh, so with that being said, oh, forgot about this point, but super important now in hiring curriculum and evaluation, right? The kind of people, the kind of uh, faculty that we're hiring, there's been a huge move in our system um, to consider diversity in hiring because we need faculty who are people of color, who are um, minorities, who are women, um, for our students to be able to also envision themselves in that role. And so it does also relate to that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass um, the second part of the workshop off to Jean. And so now that you've kind of um, developed this mindfulness, we're gonna, we're gonna challenge you a little bit um, and bring up some scenarios that you may encounter on your campus. So Jean, I'll pass it off to you. All right, yeah, uh, thank you, Catherine. So, you know, like Catherine said, now that you have like a baseline uh, awareness of the fundamental values of, you know, um, that revolves around diversity, equity, uh, and justice, like being able to uh, know the foundation of, you know, being able to see each other um, uh, in, a, in a level playing field, but also as well being able to recognize the gaps in which we can further help, you know, the disenfranchised, those who needed our help the most, and eventually being able to remove the barriers all in all. Now, um, we, as we still know, we still experience inequality, um, exclusion, um, in our society, in our campuses. Now, we just want to present these uh, situations to you, uh, put you on the spot, and um, have you think about what do you do in that position? Um, what is the right thing to do? What is the morally right thing to do? So the scenario number one is your math class is still in a online course because of the COVID pandemic. Your professor has designated a date on your first exam and has informed the class that you will be required to turn on your webcam for a proctored test session. So like proctorio uh, that is commonly used. However, you have a health problem that causes you to have severe anxiety under certain situations. In order to properly and efficiently take the exam, you would require an alternate testing environment that caters to your accommodations. So I asked, what would you do? So if um, anyone, please feel free to um, uh, share your thoughts and we will unmute you. Okay, I think we have Vice Chair uh, Region 4, Catherine Rob. Yes, thank you, Chair. What I would do is, as a student, I would first uh, speak with my counselor, and then I would go to what is at our school, Foothill, is the Disability Resource Center, and I would make an appointment, and I would speak with the coordinator there, and following that, I would then um, present documentation that supports for this particular scenario, the anxiety under certain circumstances so that it could cater to my needs. And once that's done, then I would uh, email, correspond with my professors and let them know that these are the accommodations from the Disability Resource Center. And therefore they would um, accommodate me for this particular scenario with anxiety. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you very much for that. I think it's really important that we are able to provide these resources in our campus so that we uh, don't let anyone uh, feel left behind because sometimes uh, uh, you, you, you are put into certain situations and you feel alone. You, you just want to be able to uh, be successful, but you're, you have that obstacle in front of you. So definitely have that, um, be informed and be able to have this action uh, step by step to be able to um, get you where you need to be um, with regard to your academic uh, endeavors. So um, does anyone else have um, any thoughts on this situation? So I want to pose this question to everyone too because I think this is an interesting scenario. Uh, okay. You know, there are a lot of students who don't have webcams. Um, mm -hmm. They're not able to turn on their web webcams just because they don't have the future available on their laptops, you know. I'm sure many of you have maybe experienced some complaints from that. I know I have for my campus, so I'd, I'd be really interested to hear, um, you know, some of the responses to that. 
um, because that's an equity issue, right? How do you respond to an equity issue where a student doesn't have the technological support um, to do well in their classes? Definitely. Um, I think we have uh, Jeff uh, Jung. I'm going to unmute him. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hi. Um, so, I mean, this situation kind of applies to me because I do have like anxiety and like one of the things that would help help me like with in this particular situation of having to be on cam when it presents like a like it could potentially like kick off a panic attack or something which is like just the reality but like I would try to um not like not negotiate but I would try to make like accommodations to where I had like something that like would comfort me like when I'm on cam and like get like prior authorization or like prior notice to say like you know I might have like an item like with me and like I might be fiddling with it or something like that like a fidget spinner like during a test and because it helps me with anxiety and like just to like give the proctor like a heads up like something like that could help I just wanted to say that. I definitely uh, agree with that. I think, um, you know, um, you want to be able to have that line of communication with your instructors, uh, making them know that, oh, there is, you know, I'm experiencing this issue and it's um, really how I'm going through it. So you want to be able to make, make them, make the situation known to them because sometimes, um, you know, um, we neglect these kind of situations and we end up in scenarios in which um, they get left behind or they fail the class because um, they're not given these accommodations. So I definitely uh, agree with that. Um, just you know, being able to contact your instructor and communicating yourself. Um, I'll take one last um, uh, response or answer. Anyone? We have uh, Sophia. Right here. Okay. There you go. Um, I would also, um, pro proctorio to me seems very invasive. Um, and I did bring this up to the academic senate, and then we uh, worked with the work. No, 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 I'm sorry. I brought this up to the academic senate executive board, and it seemed to have just been slid under the rug, and they're. There, I don't know of any al other alternative options, but um, yeah, going to the academic senate was what I was going to bring up. I'm glad that you brought that issue up. As you said, um, it was you know brought under the rug. So I think it's definitely something uh, that we need to bring up again in our curriculums, in our um, uh, committees of administration, in our uh, respective schools. I think that you know, if we keep on with this COVID virtual environment, I think we got to be able to address that problem because that is the main way of how we test our students, how we, and I, again, uh, like Catherine uh, said earlier, it's an issue of equity. Not everyone has the accessibility to be able to have their webcams. And um, we have other students who do, who can't have um, these kind of um, uh, uh, be put in the, a proctored environment because of, anxiety. So definitely, I think that's simply, definitely something that we will uh, bring up uh, uh, later on. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. So Catherine, if you could please uh, move on to the next slide. Yeah, I just want to mention, you know, the scenario, while it may be um, geared towards, you know, recognizing the needs of disabled students who may have a disability like that, kind of prompts a lot of different, um, you know, thinking about uh, different equity issues that come up with this, right? So, so like Sophia mentioned, Proctorio has been a huge one across all our campuses. Um, and as student leaders, you're in the position to work with your campus organizations um, to kind of combat it, that invasion of privacy that programs like Proctorio might, might bring, right? Um, you know, in addition to disability, technological um, issues as well. 
Um, and then I think the last one I want to bring up is just classroom flexibility. You're also in a position to, um, you know, influence the, the amount of flexibility um, that a professor may enforce in their classroom and you're in the position to go and talk to those that those faculty members as um, as you're engaging with your academic senate senates and bring those issues up so just want to make um, make those points oh. did you want the other slide Jean? Ah, uh, yes please awesome. so yeah the key takeaways for this would be um, allowing that sort of uh, accessibility uh, for your resources, being able to reach out to your um, resource on your campus. And um, also just keeping your um, facilitators accountable and have you um, recognize everyone's situation, being able to put themselves in everyone's shoes in order for them to help them. So the next situation is, and I will read it, you're an active member of your student government association and your team consists of people from diverse backgrounds, ages, cultures, orientations. You've been working on this initiative and project to engage your student body, and you're currently in a meeting to address ideas uh, of your designated task moving forward. However, you do have a team leader who wants to pursue his own predetermined plan without, any, without taking into serious consideration the perspective of each and every one of the whole team. So in this situation, you have that team leader who is really not inclusive of any or open minded. So what do you do? How do you um, respond to it? Okay, I think we have Roy. And go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry about that. So I think communication is key here. Just um, talk over and have them reason out why they feel the way they do. So you can kind of get all the cards on the table. Um, you can't guess what other people are thinking. Maybe they've got experiences that uh, make them decide the way they decide. And I think just like what we're doing in trying to understand all these diverse backgrounds, if we understand where they're coming from, there may be a compromise somewhere in there. So as far as taking it beyond where the group is, I mean, in, include the group as a whole, and it, it's a democracy, right? I mean, it, even if they're a team leader, you should be able to justify having some sort of a democracy vote or something like that, right? Top four members. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would really agree with that. I think it's important that in any team you get your consensus. If you really want to get something done, something good that, that's done, you can't really do it alone. And oftentimes we, um, we forget about that. We go have our own personal interests, ambitions, when in fact we shouldn't just think about, you know, it's important that we keep ourselves whole, but we also got to think about the collective. We got to be able to have empathy and compassion towards others. We got to be able to see each other, treat them with dignity and respect because we are coming uh, from these diverse backgrounds and different ages, genders, um, orientations. And we got to be able to respect each and every single perspective so that we can have one common um, objective in mind. And then we can do it uh, peacefully. We can do it effectively as a team. And um, does anyone else have uh, any um, responses in how you would deal this kind of situation? Okay. Um, okay, seeing and hearing none, I think we would um, move on to the key concepts, Catherine. You want the next slide, the last one? Uh, yeah. Okay, so as the key concepts were for the last one, it's being able to recognize, um, as uh, Roy put it, uh, being able to recognize strengths and weaknesses and being able to formulate those strengths and weaknesses 
um, without in excluding anyone to form uh, a really proficient and powerful team. So the last scenario has to deal with, um, you know, the heated discussions that we have. So it's, it says you're having conversations with your fellow students and your conversation comes to more delicate topics like politics and religion. However, tension and confusion arises when someone misinterprets the meaning of commentary or opinion provided by one of your peers. So how do you handle the situation and come to a meaningful understanding of the uh, subject matter at hand? What will you do if you, Sophia? Yeah, in, in terms of conflict resolution, I think it, it's important to lay a foundation where we seek to understand and we try to get both perspectives while staying open-minded. Um, but yeah, seeking to understand where you're coming from. And um, most of the time when, when people say ignorant things, they don't realize it. So having those conversations uh, would be crucial. Absolutely. Being able to not only uh, reserve your own opinions about it, it's important that you, you are convicted in your opinions that you, but at the same time, you have to be able to recognize you know, the other side, the opinions of every single person in the room, because again, it goes back to uh, dignity and respect. If you don't respect one another, then you really won't have this meaningful uh, harmony of conversation. Uh, if you don't see that, um, then you can't, you know, reach a point that you can, oh, this is, we see each other eye to eye here. And, um, and if you can't do that, then um, you won't get really any, anywhere. So yeah, I appreciate that. And we have uh, Jeff here, if you'd like to add on um, to that. Um, Chair, there is also a question and a comment in the chat. Would you like me to read that first or do you want to go with the question? Um, I'll go ahead and have uh, Jeff uh, uh, speak first and I'll be reading the question. Awesome, thank you. Hi, so I think, you know, just with when you're talking about politics and religion, I think the first thing you need really need to do is realize like how how explosive of a situation it is. So like if you just make everybody kind of step back and like just realize that it's it's a good thing that you're having the conversation, but it's just the nature of it is it's bound to have conflict. So it kind of helps just to realize that that's just a part of the process is like, there's going to be conflict there and, um, you know, hopefully cooler heads uh, prevail. Yeah, definitely. Um, in delicate topics like this, it's important that you take a step back and recognize what you're really talking about and recognize that these situations or conversations will get hard and uncomfortable. But if you can understand that and be mindful of everyone as much as you can, then you could reach a point, like I said earlier, that you can have put meaning, you can put the purpose above everything else, because that I think um, that's a conversation. Okay. Um, okay. We'll, we'll address the question here. Um, Jian, um, do you mind if we take that question at the end, actually? Um, oh, just because yeah. I want to be mindful of everyone's time. We're going to run out of time, and we still have one more little section here. Oh, definitely. Um, we can have uh, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but I think we can stick around and just answer any last questions in these scenarios. Uh, so I do want to give everyone, uh, give Priya the last slide here. Um, you know, we kind of went through this learning experience, learning from each other, and, you know, putting our knowledge to the test in these various scenarios, but we wanted everyone to take something home um, from this workshop. So we actually have a resources package that we're releasing, and Priya will get a little bit into what that is entailing. Yeah, so we put together this resources package for you all because, you know, as the title of our workshop suggests, um, we did a lot of discussion today, but, you know, we want to move um, towards action, you know, what can you all do at your schools? 
Um, and so the package that we've created includes a toolkit that's been put together um, by students um, for faculty, staff, administration, and other students to use. Um, so we hope that you share the resources that we have with you with your um, respective ASGs. And um, we've also included a statement um, that our DEI committee has put together um, that your ASGs can adopt. Um, and so, yeah, we just really hope that all of these resources are helpful um, and can inform you, you know, in your student advocacy and overall um, DEI work. And of course, you know, this, these are not like a comprehensive or super comprehensive list of all the resources. Um, there's definitely a lot more resources out there. Um, so definitely we encourage you to kind of look into that on your own. Uh, but yeah, we just hope that these are really helpful um, since they are pretty specific to, you know, um, community college and community college issues. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Priya. And so this is just the um, advocacy toolkit that we released, but you can look more into that. So we just want to encourage, we are at the end of this workshop, but encourage everyone to stay in touch. Um, in that, that link I sent in the chat, you actually have this presentation PowerPoint in there. So if you want our contact information and want to reach out to us, um, you know, just to stay, stay in contact, um, please feel free to email all of us. Our contact is, information is here. And then lastly, we have a workshop evaluation we'd appreciate if just everyone can fill out um, that can kind of help us guide, guide you towards, you know, more of the resources that you might want to see um, or other topics that you want us to discuss in future workshops. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll go ahead and end this workshop here and um, uh, Gia and Priya and myself will stick around for just some last minute questions if you have any. Um, but just want to thank everyone so much for coming and hopefully you enjoyed the experience of, of learning from each other and just growing with student leaders. So thank you so much.